Volume 3, Chapter 20, and of the Heart's Desire. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Sorry for being late, it's about 1.30 a.m. here, so I'm at least an hour and half late from my promise time. My plans went awry. I was babysitting my nephew for my sister and her husband, he's not even one yet. I'm not sure how many months old off the top of my head, and they unfortunately had their schedule changed while they were at work. Originally they were supposed to be back around 6 p.m., but because some other employees called in sick, or something like that, they had to fill in for them and didn't get back until midnight. Well, either way, the chapter is now out. I will also have one up next week so we can get back on schedule, but don't expect them that often. Well, enough said, enjoy your chapter. Falimer 3.20 and of the heart's desire these two bodies are specialized in underwater action, aren't they? Dot? Reiko was observing and while analyzing for any signs of hostility approaching. Small stature, thin figure, and hands and feet with our webbed dot. Both bodies had the same form. The prominence of the forearm seems to have high offensive power, doesn't it? Dot? Reiko approached to about 5 meters and hid herself in that place. The vicinity is a shallow place that is no more than 2 meters deep, but it's rocky enough to not lack hiding places. The sign of arrow is approaching, isn't it? Dot. When it was seen from beneath the water, the order of approach was the shallow bottom boat of Reinhardt and Elsa, the mono hull of the nobleman, Valentino, and the catamaran of Marcia. At that moment, the underwater golems began to move. One of them went towards Elsa's boat, while the other advanced on Cygnus. I don't know what you're going to do, but I won't let you go. Dot. Since the opponent was a golem, Reiko had absolutely no hesitation. She bent her body like a spring and kicked off the rocks to move through the water in a moment. She first grabbed the legs of the closer golem and crushed them at once. The interior is hollow. It is incomparable to the golems made by father. Dot. After crushing its other leg so that its movements were dull, Reiko leaves it in place and goes after the other golem. Are you going to tear the boat hull with that protuberance? Dot? The golem was aimed at the catamaran, but Reiko's arm quickly caught the golem in an instant. The protuberance is steel, it's soft, isn't it? Dot? Reiko finished twisting the arm and water entered through the hollow arm, dulling its movements at once. That's it. Dot. Because of their dulled movements, the golems were not an enemy for Reiko. Reiko wrenched off the remaining arm and both legs the same way as she did the other one. Because the control core at the heart was fine, they should be able to identify the criminal. Well, let's report to Father. Dot. After leaving the golems which couldn't move anymore, Reiko returns to the boat that Jean is on. To her rear, the lead group passed through without incident. TL. I'm wondering if it's really Valentine who set those there and he's just that stupid, or if it's a setup to frame him. Father, it's finished. Dot. Quietly entering from the side, Reiko reported it. Is that so? Thank you. By the way, did you take the evidence from the golems? Dot? If that's all, I can go back and grab them. Reiko calmly answered. Is that so? Then please do. Dot. Yes. Dot. Reiko seems to be happy that Jean depended on her and is acting with a smile. First, she took the hands and feet she had wrenched off and twisted and stretched them into an unshapely rope. It was a forcible labor and not even engineering magic was used. She tied the two golems together using this rope made of their limbs. As ridiculous of a feat as it is, Reiko is unaware of this since she's only using 20% of her output. Well, both father and daughter are birds of a feather. TL. This sentence was confusing. But they're saying that both Jean and Reiko are absurd and unaware of how absurd they and their actions tend to be. With the golems tied to the aft of the boat, Reiko began to push it back. What? That boat. Dot. It's moving without rowing. Dot. Some on the sightseeing sheep seemed to notice this time, but Jean was not pursued in this matter since no one saw his face. The top group that went around the uninhabited island Io, the turning point is in the order of 3, 1, 35, and 28. Dot. The play dot by dot play had continued to announce with their usual tension. The last stage from here is the hide at speed sections with no obstacles, right? Dot. One announcer says. 
Athlete 35 and Marsha were behind and to the left of one moving towards the open sea. It's because it doesn't let Reesh interfere with their course. And they mad a spurt at the stretch. Oh, Athlete 35 is fast. The water spray is really flying back. Dot. Slanting to advance had caused Cygnus to lose some speed, but that was nothing. It has surpassed. It has surpassed. Team MJR has finally outran number 35 and 1. Dot. Marsha has gone out in front of Reesh for the first time. This time, it was Reesh who was impatient. Why? Why didn't it fall out? That ship performs so well. Dot. Reesh couldn't believe it when the catamaran which Marsha rides on passed her and sprayed her with water. Though she made the golem that Lord Valerio made work to the limit, the difference didn't shrink. It seemed like it was a nightmare. Marsha accelerates more and encloses the distance between her and Elsa who's in the lead. Fast, it is as Big Brother Rye anticipated. Dot. Elsa felt the difference in the absolute performance of the ship and decided to stop that with course interference. Fair and square game. Dot. Even though it's not suitable for the climax of the finals, course interference is not foul. Lorelai was encouraged to accelerate even more than the limit. Using her flexible body, Lorelai began to kick the water in the rear. On the other hand, Cygnus moved the hull forward with the water wheel driven by the pedal that arrow rode to the limit and pushed a white spray up high. Well, the water wheel is just inefficient. Dot. Jean sighed while seeing it from a long distance. Although flashy, the water wheel is spraying too much water into the air, that meant it was doing extra work, but there were no records about it before this. TL. I think he's trying to say that not many would notice the flaw since it hadn't been written before, and is pointing out that the large amount of water being thrown is a sign of wasted energy. After all, a propeller would be better, huh? Dot. Gene hasn't figured out how to build a suitable drive mechanism for a propeller yet, even with his power. When I return to the research center, I'd like to focus on this part as expected. Dot. While continuing his train of thought, Gene was jolted in the boat. Work hard, Lorelei. Dot. Elsa controlled Lorelei desperately, but number 35 gradually narrowed the distance. Before long, overwork, death, Master Elsa Lorelei said that it had exceeded its limit. At this pace, it won't be able to reach the goal. Reluctantly, Elsa drops the output of Lorelei, and Cygnus finally takes the lead. What unbelievable speed! Number 35 has outrun the Blue Marine and taken the lead for the first time. When the competition is over, Team MJR will be in great demand, won't they? Dot. If the nameless MJR won the championship, there would be several rich people and nobles who would call out to them. That's right. According to our documents, it's said that Marsha, the ship operator, is also a shipwright. And Jean who made the golem is a nameless magic craftsman, but after this his name should spread quickly, won't it? Dot. For the first time in the finals, Cygnus is running in the lead. Although he couldn't see it anymore, he could listen to the play-by-play -play and that made Jean smile. Now Reiko will return quickly, two dot. Because they had to advance along a different course from Marsha, it can't be denied that it's a roundabout route, but they had to take it to avoid being seen. The small boat with Jean took the great detour around and aimed at the port town, Port Rock. At the goal point in Port Rock's central port, one person who was watching the magic screen was grinding their teeth in frustration. Needless to say, it was the noble man, Valentino. TL. So it appears that he really is just that stupid, or maybe I'm just too familiar with basic investigations, but I'd think anyone would suspect the one who would profit the most out of a sabotage first. Grr. Surprisingly that girl Reesh is cowardly. Sir Valerio is Sir Valerio, too, but I poured in so much money, what is it, that condition dot. After seeming mortified and murmuring so, he changed completely and a dark smile floated on his face. Since it's come to this, there's no choice, he muttered so. Valentino, they will soon be at the goal. Shall we go meet the contestants at the finish line? Blah. The person in the VIP seats said. There are not many who can call Valentino by name without a title like this person did. It was Valentino's boss that had spoken, a female Lord Elias Kingdom South Saw's state, Marquis Dominique de Duferenciano. TL. Suggestions. 
Valentino clicked his tongue inwardly, but went down according to the feudal lord's instructions from the VIP seats without showing his thoughts on his face. Volume 3 Chapter 21 Awards Ceremony, Anne You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Notice Apparently, there's a novel aggregator site out there, readlightnovel.com, that is using our translations as well as a lot of other translators. For the most part, it looks pretty good, they do have a link back to my main page for translations, but they remove the in-context credits, such as the translated by slash edited by at top. I don't mind them using my translations, I just want them to leave the credits on the translation, so if you do choose to read there for anything, and you see no credits or links to translators, please leave a comment for them so that it can get rectified. And notice here's your chapter, enjoy it. Translated by Fallonmer, edited by Nexius Valdoran 3.21 Awards Ceremony, Anne. Unbeknownst to everyone present, a small boat had arrived just outside of Port Rock. Everyone had gone to the finish line to watch the winner of the race. Okay, it's all right now Reiko. A naked Reiko boarded the ship and put on her clothes swiftly without worry. Father, we should take these golems to the event officials as soon as possible. Ah. Yes, please. Dot. Yes. Dot. Reiko hauled the golems and began to carry them since they couldn't move. Jean helped out and did the same as well. Hmm. What? What is it? Dot. What's that? Huh. Dot. Most of the residents were paying attention to the competition, but we still stood out. Because Jean intended to leave this town soon, he began to act serious. At the finish line, a thunderous cheer could be heard. Athlete number 35, now, G-O-O-E-L dot. Jean was reminded by the especially loud announcement that Marcia had taken first place. Well done, Marcia dot. Thought Jean as he made his way through the shifting mass of people who were pushing and shoving to catch a glimpse of this year's queen, Marcia, who donned a tearful face. A slightly joyful Reiko commented, Congratulations, father. Well, it's natural since it's father. Ah, if it isn't Jean. Congratulations on your victory. By the way, what is Miss Reiko carrying? Jean ran into Reinhardt while he came down from the VIP seats to thank Elsa for her service. Fortunately for Jean, Reinhardt noticed the two figures carrying golems. Oh, Reinhardt. About these two golems, they appear to be sent by a third party who wish to interfere with today's event. What? Is the control core safe? Dot? Of course. Even though I can confirm the details myself, I'd like an event official to be present. Dot. I'll never forgive anyone that defiles the competition that should be fair. Hey, official. Dot. Although Jean was an uninvited guest, because of Reinhardt's influence and position as an aristocrat in another country, the vice chairman of the event came over immediately. The chairperson seemed to be occupied by managing the awards ceremony. There is someone who attempted to cheat with these golems. Dot. What? Dot? Ed, Nanny. When we investigate the control core, all the supporting evidence will appear. Watch. Dot. Reinhardt works his magic on the control core. Instead of the higher ranking, it is the easier to understand. This is, dot. Light begins to flow and forms letters in a line. When read, this part, interfere with all ships except for athlete number ones, can be read, dot. This says, destroy athlete number 35 and. Is not readable, but they want it destroyed. What is this thing, dot? The golem was damaged when Reiko disabled it, so not everything was preserved perfectly. This being so, enough information was kept intact in an understandable condition. In other words, this golem was sent out for, dot. The complexion of the vice dot chairman changed, but Reinhardt remained calm. No, we shouldn't come to conclusions too early, as it could possibly be an excessive supporter's efforts. To. Anyway, we'll have to bring this up in the official event governing committee. Dot. As he finished the evaluation, an order was given to a subordinate that had them carry the golems to a secure location for safekeeping. Oh. In such a place. Dot. When Jean relaxed his shoulders and murmured, Reinhardt was in high spirits. I saw Jean and Miss Reiko row out and leave from before. 
Adding up the events that happened afterwards, sending an invitation for you to visit my country seems more and more appealing. When I go back home, do you wish to accompany me? As Jean thought about the proposal, Reinhardt told him about his plans for travel. I'd like to travel with you immediately after this competition, but unfortunately I have other things that I need to attend to. I intend to go visit the other regions, and in doing so, passing through Elias' kingdom will probably take around another 10 days. TL. The corrections came from Anon, thanks for helping make it clearer. Because he thought Jean would provide him with inspiration and ingenuity, he gave a grace period of 10 days for convenience. If that's the case, I'd be happy to go together. Oh, I see. My Randall family will definitely welcome you to our country. Then how about I send someone to meet you here in 10 days? When Jean said he'd like to go, Reinhardt was pleasantly surprised. In that case, that'll help. Oh, how much baggage can I bring? If it's one carriage, it doesn't matter. There didn't seem to be a problem, so Jean thanked him. The central harbor was decided on as the meeting place and Jean received a handkerchief with the crest of the Randall house on it. This will allow the person who's going to escort Jean to identify him. As the conversation finished and everything was agreed upon, remarkably loud cheers came from the direction of the competition venue. Oh, is the awards ceremony going to start soon? So Jean and Reinhardt traveled to the venue together. On the podium are three extremely beautiful women. Marcia, who wore a blue swimsuit was on the highest platform marked number one. Because of her narrow figure, it emphasized her other features, attracting the gazes of almost all of the male visitors. Elsa was wearing a yellow swimsuit and was in second place. Because of her modest figure in spite of being 16 years old, and her being a Viscount's daughter, people were cheering for her less openly. TL. I think they're trying to say that people didn't want to look like pedophiles, so they weren't paying as much attention to her and using her status as an excuse for not doing so. Standing in third place was Riche with her red swimsuit. Although she was petite, she had a glamorous figure which divided the popularity and attention between her and Marcia in two. The awards ceremony was over and Jean and Reiko were talking to Marcia in the waiting room. She had already taken off her swimsuit and was wearing her usual casual clothes. Jean, thank you, it's thanks to you that I could win the championship. Thanks to you, I should be able to succeed as a shipwright. While saying so, she placed the bag with the 1 million tour prize money on the table. I was able to get the 100,000 tour prize for the design of the ship. TL. I think that the last one was supposed to be 100,000 as well, but there was an extra zero. It was 100 versus 10 which showed in this line, so I think it's a typo, but I'll leave it at that. Since the catamaran Cygnus was evaluated highly, Marcia appeared to show some more sincerity. Because of that, I got an award for uniqueness. This is your share, Jean. She put the bag of 100,000 tour in front of Jean. The water wheel drive was also evaluated highly. Because of that, the division of the championship prize money will be equally divided according to our contract. Um, I. Ah, uh, I understand. Because Jean contributed the most to our victory, I want to give you 3 4 THS of the prize money. No, that's not it, I, Jean started to say that it was a joke, but decided to stay quiet about it, because his modesty could appear as excessive and devalue the victory due to being too reserved. Well then, half, if you please. Dot. Saying so, he opened the bag with gold coins and counted out 50 and left it to Reiko. Reiko then put it in a pocket of her apron. That was refreshing. What will you do now, Jean? Marcia asked with relief on her face. I was originally planning to go sightseeing in this country and see the different towns. Reinhardt invited me to visit also, is that so? Though I am disappointed, the contract is over and Jean is not from this country. Although it was short, it was definitely fun. Saying so, Marcia held out her right hand and Jean grasped it in return. I was also happy that I could team up with Marcia. After saying so and smiling, Jean and Marcia left the waiting room. They were then promptly mobbed by people who wished to hire the two of them. Excuse me, is it true? 
Yes, Reinhardt, a VIP checked it in front of me. Dot. Go investigate this immediately. Dot. The female feudal lord, Dominique de Ferenciano, was angry at the news that there was a third party who plotted sabotage with the golems and commanded that the issue be investigated immediately. On that day, an aide to the feudal lord was found to have bought a large quantity of magic stones, and that a magic formation of movement interference was discovered on the desk of an event official. Furthermore, a merchant who used some materials and money made poor quality bronze statues of a specific visitor. They didn't say it was Marcia, and was reported. TL. The part in the, they didn't say it was Marcia, was actually in the raw. Another thing that was discovered was that one person who was arrested was a member of the garrison. He was the one who had snuck into the docks where the ships in the finals were kept and failed to steal a ship. As a result of interrogation, they found out that he was after ship number 35. Further inquiry also found that Valentino had been persistently trying to make Marcia, the champion, into his mistress. The final nail in the coffin was that they were able to identify the magic craftsman who programmed the golems that Reiko had captured. Naturally, the person who hired him became clear shortly after. Although most of the evidence was circumstantial, the contents found within the programming of the golems were definitive. Valentino was cornered by the evidence. Lord Valerio who made the golem was also under suspicions, and a written protest was going to be sent to the Siluria kingdom. Although he was cornered, Valentino still held a fearless laugh. Later through the day, the event officials had an announcement to make. This is a very regrettable, but a third party was found guilty of attempting to sabotage an otherwise fair event. The party performed in favoritism of number one Elias's glory. The position of third place is revoked from Elias's glory's team and given to team 28. Team Seabird is now raised to third place. Therefore, as a result of this, we eagerly await for the response of all those related. Dot. Volume 3. Chapter 22. When a mystery is solved. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Some announcements before we begin. An editor has joined me, Nexias Faldoran. I will be releasing the chapters as I have translated them unedited. If you want, you can wait a day or so, however long it takes him, but he can work much faster than me, for a cleaner version, or you can read it as I have translated it. I'm considering switching to using the Japanese honorifics and unique words, kampai, dotchan, dotsan, etc., and would like your input on which you would prefer. Lastly, I was alerted to a novel aggregator site, readlightnovel.com. Overall, it looks good, they give credit in some places, but remove it from the chapters. An example, on the page for MCM, they've only given credit to my page. I do think it's a useful site, and if you choose to read from there, please make sure they're giving credit where credit is due. If you see a chapter on any novel that's not properly sourced, please let the translators know and leave a message for their moderators. Hopefully enough people letting them know will get them to ensure everyone involved gets their credit. Other than that, Sorry for being late this week. I have drill, my army work, this weekend and since I'm currently the only one in my unit authorized to open the arms room, a giant safe, and they needed it for prep work, I got pulled away fairly frequently this week and had to work around school, but hey, it means I get a bigger paycheck this month. Now, without further ado, enjoy your The Chapter. Updated with edits translated by Fallonmer, edited by Nexius 3.22 when a mystery is solved now then. In honor of everyone's efforts, cheers. TL. Would you rather I use cheers or can pie? Jean, Reiko, Marsha, Reinhardt, and Elsa, four people and one automaton, were celebrating their victory from the other day at a luxurious restaurant. Although Jean and Marsha were invited by various aristocrats and merchants after the competition, the invitation they received from Reinhardt gave them a reason to decline them all, and were able to shrink away from the attention of the masses. No, I lost to Jean. There's no way Lorelei could have won. Dot. Really? I couldn't believe that you were overworking Lorelei during the last stage. Dot. Both Reinhardt and Elsa obediently admitted defeat. Please tell me one thing, Jean. Dot. For now, they seem to want to hear various things about Jin's origins. The first thing that was asked in this conversation, is it true that you came over to this continent with a dot? Whether or not he expected it to be brought into the conversation, Jean thought about it deeply. Yeah.
but I don't want to disclose too much information about it. If by chance it were to be broken, my means of returning home would disappear. Jean declined in a polite manner. Nodding in understanding, Reinhardt replied with another question. Is that so? I wanted to check it out, but it's impossible, isn't it? Big Brother Ray, everyone has one or two things they can't tell others about. When Elsa said so, Reinhardt also thought it was unsuitable to continue, so he backed down. Sorry, but someday I'll be able to invite you guys to my home. When Jean said so in a semi diplomatic manner, Reinhardt took the bait. Really? Is that so? It would be my pleasure. Ah, I have to go to another nation's capital as a diplomat tomorrow, it's regrettable, but I'll definitely have to take you up on your offer eventually. Why? Yeah, dot. Although Jean regretted mentioning the invitation, only the future knows what it will bring. As the meal progressed, they began to talk about the competition. The topic came to talk about the golems that Jean and Reiko had caught. In the end, there was no evidence of fraud by the operator of the ship, Reish, so she hasn't been arrested. Valentino is being held in custody while the investigation continues. Dot. Hmm. That's understandable, right? Dot. Because Valentino had several ways to handle this, Marcia made a complex expression. Marcia's had various troubles, right? Dot. Jean understood Marcia's feelings. Sensing the atmosphere between Marcia and Jean, Reinhardt could tell that they would have a hard time talking about it. It's normally a topic that people don't want to talk about, but after winning the championship and being in high spirits, drinking wine and becoming slightly intoxicated, Marcia began to talk about her problems before her participation. What? Can you explain in more detail please, oh, and also in chronological sequence? Th Reinhardt asked with an unusually serious look. Marcia began with how she couldn't find a magic craftsman and how all of the magic stones had been sold out. Furthermore, the price of bronze had doubled, and even poor quality bronze was being sold at an exorbitant price. Um, after that, it was the arson incident. Dot. She recalled the fire that Reinhardt had put out that was going directly for their ship. Since he thought there wouldn't be another chance, Jean decided to speak as well. Um, Actually, the night before the last preliminary. He talked about how Reiko had repelled some intruders and dumped them far away. Is that so? Hmm. Reinhardt put his finger on his forehead and began to brood. Even if it doesn't seem like it, Big Brother Rai is smart. Elsa's praise is done in a subtle manner. He isn't just a diplomat for show. After sitting like that for a while, Reinhardt appears to have had an idea and looks up. At first, it appears that they intended to prevent Marcia from participating. Jean agreed with this, yes, but I don't understand why. Why was it limited to Marcia? Would it ignore other participants? Reinhardt shows a broad grin. It's at that point that I thought, perhaps it's not Marcia who's being aimed at, but the ship. Ed. Dot. In other words, Reinhardt's explanation was that they wanted to destroy the catamaran. Destroy it. Who dot? Of course, Valentino dot. Judging from Marcia's story, if she couldn't participate in the competition, she would be forced to let go of the catamaran. When it came to that, Marcia who had little gold would sell it to Valentino, or so Reinhardt deduces. I see. I had little money, and there's the maintenance fees until next year. I would have had to sell it for some money and the other party would have likely been connected to Valentino. Marcia supported Reinhardt's reasoning. And his deductions continued. Now that Marcia was qualified to participate in the competition, they couldn't purchase the ship. So they attempted arson. Reinhardt's explanation showed that the ship would cause them trouble and not that they wanted the ship. He then took a sip of wine to quench his thirst and continued. The arson failed, and Jean made an autonomous golem to pilot the boat. If handled poorly, the criminal could be identified. Dot. Everyone listened to Reinhardt's theory without interrupting. Therefore, they had to resort to a more desperate plan. They attempted to kidnap or harm Marcia to remove her from the competition, but that also failed. Dot. As Reinhardt illustrated all of this, he looked like a completely different person. 
the last resort were the golems in the water, but that scheme also came to nothing thanks to Miss Reiko. Other ships were disturbed as well, and and if things went well, they would get the championship. Reinhardt takes a breath. If I can check the catamaran, I'm certain that I'll understand something. He concluded. The ships that placed from first to third were under the management of the competition committee at this time. Although it can't be reached immediately, because of the previous methods employed, they couldn't rest easy. Besides, Valentino is a lord's assistant. But he should be under investigation right now, so now was the prime time for their undercover investigation. It should be investigated early if possible. As Reinhardt finished, they quickly finished their food and left the restaurant. The outside was already completely dark. As they walked down the street towards the harbor, with the light of a magic lamp guiding their way. The sea breeze at night was chilly and pleasant on their slightly tipsy faces. Reinhardt asked Marcia a question while walking. When was the catamaran made? Marcia thought a little, about two years ago, I think. Then I readjusted it restlessly. Oh, a large adjustment was made last year. Wasn't it last year? That Valentino said he wanted Marcia as a concubine. Dot. Last year? Yeah. Dot. As expected, it seemed to have some relevance to the situation at hand. Before long, the party arrived at the public dock. One guard was standing on duty. Thanks for the hard work. I'd like to check on a ship a little, would that be all right? Dot. He was from the team that came in second, the owner of Blue Marine, Reinhardt, a guest of honor who stated his intention. After he nodded once, the guard unlocked the dock's back entrance. He expressed his thanks as he entered inside. It was pitch black, but because Jean, Reiko, Reinhardt, and Elsa used magic, it quickly became bright enough. Now, Marcia, may I check your ship? Marcia began to investigate the construction of the ship right away. First, the whole hull was inspected. Nothing in particular is found though, because Jean bleached it with. Next, the right half of the hull. The inside was hollow except for where there was structural material. What? What's this dot? An unfamiliar parchment was forced into a gap of the structural material of the right hull near the rear corner. It's impossible that I didn't notice this gap until now, stay here dot. A letter and a picture were written on what Marcia pulled out of the hull. Marcia began to read it out loud. Now, let's see, it appears to be a contract for four Araratorado asterisk, dot. TL. I have no idea what is supposed to be, and it appears again in this chapter, any suggestions. The closest I can think of is erudite, which is a form of ruby, but it doesn't quite fit. When they heard this, Reinhardt and Elsa's eyes went wide. This is a Eruderado asterisk. Two people raised their voice in surprise, but Jean, what is that dot? It was a jewel that Jean didn't know about. Yeah, that's... Reinhardt began to explain to him. The thing was a very rare jewel that was discovered about 100 years ago. Because it had a property that amplified the effects of magic, many countries restricted the circulation of it. It's also monopolized by the nation of the Elias Kingdom. It would cost about 10 million tor for a worthless one, so about 40 million tor for four, or about 400 million yen. If an individual was trading such a thing, then they were smuggling. E.H. I didn't know that. Marcia cried. Since it seemed to have concerned the dealings of such a valuable jewel, it was unbearable. I understand, it's not a jewel that a mere commoner should have in their possession. Reinhardt was referring to an under-the-table contract that people didn't want others to see. Then the front door was forced open loudly. N. Dun Dun Duowen. Volume 3. Chapter 23, Conclusion. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. 3.23 Conclusion Golems. That's definitely one of Valentino's golems. The golem that broke open the door had been owned by Valentino in the competition and was made by Lord Valerio. That guy, did he get reckless because he's cornered? Then another figure appeared, it was another identical golem of the same type. Two golems. 
Did he make enough profit from smuggling to spend money like that? The two golems approached with firm steps while soaking in water up to their chest. I guess they came eyeing the evidence of the El Dorado transactions. TL. I'm thinking between El Dorado and El Dorite, please give me your opinions below, they are advancing straight towards three ships, Marcia's catamaran being among them. Reinhardt called out to Lorelei, yes, creator. The mermaid type golem, Lorelei, appeared from the water. Wait, Reinhardt, do you really intend to stop both of them with just Lorelei? Lorelei's leather material puts it at a disadvantage against a metallic enemy. While Jean worried, he was told, oh, even though it looks like this, Lorelei's combat power is high, although it's limited to the water. Saying so, he issued instructions to Lorelei. Lorelei disappeared into the water, and the next moment, the two golems lost their balance as though they had lost their footing and fell down. Good. Well, we'd better get out of here before it's too late. Reinhardt tries to make Elsa and Marcia evacuate the dock first, but I refuse. If left alone as is, won't those golems destroy my ship? Yes, of course. Apparently, those two golems seem to be a semi autonomous type, and will keep working towards their goal until they are destroyed or completed. When Jean said so, Marcia asked about what a semi autonomous type was. Reinhardt answered her question. The reason semi autonomous types are made the most is because they have some autonomy to react to a situation. For example, you don't have to give it detailed instructions when you say bring me. Conversely, an advanced autonomous golem would require a significantly higher skill to create than the average magic craftsman, which are already limited. Well, here it is too narrow. On the other hand, Jean was troubled. Reiko was in another room fighting at 10.2% against identical golems, but because of how small the docks were, her fighting ability was hindered further due to the probability of causing collateral damage to the surroundings. When Reiko strikes with sufficient power to destroy a golem, the force is likely to be transferred behind it too, powerful enough to break a wall. After looking around the dock, Jean found out whether or not there were any good methods of attack. Reiko. Knock that fishing weight into them. The weight, or ballast, weighed around 20 kilograms. It's used instead of an anchor to fix a ship in place temporarily. Yes, father. Reiko lifted the lump of iron lightly with 20% of her output and threw it at the golem. Ah. Dot. Whose voice was that? The weight that Reiko threw crushed the upper body of the golem and protruded outside of the dock. It's good that the door was open. Jean was relieved that the golem was forced out without breaking the door. Furthermore, Reiko hurled another weight at another golem. The second golem raised its hand in order to catch the weight, but Reiko had thrown it with 20% of her total output. The lump of iron that was flying at a super at high speed crushed the arm that was held out and the upper body, as was and kept flying out to sea without losing any speed. Everyone who was watching were stunned like deers in headlights. The first to return to their senses was Reinhardt. Lorelei, find the control core of the golem. Dot. Yes. Dot. When analyzing the control cores, the criminal can be identified. Lorelei immediately retrieved the two control cores from the water. On the other hand, Reinhardt began explaining the situation to the guards who had finally gathered. Elsa supports him from the side as well. Jean who saw all of this thought it would make a good reference as expected. I see, the two golems forced open the door to the dock and attacked. Dot. The guard is also hurt, but he's also saying that without a doubt. Dot. Anyways, please come to the Lord's place. Dot. We'll secure the crime scene, TL. It really says we'll guard here, but I feel this fits better, they had caused a large uproar. Jean and the others were going to the female lord who rules the southern part of the Elias kingdom including Portlock, Dominique de Ferenciano, as important witnesses. Meanwhile, at the government building where Dominique de Ferenciano is, three subordinates of Marquis Hudson and Valentino du Hudson were confined to a room on the second floor for an investigation. For an aide to a feudal lord, it wasn't a jail cell but a room in the government office building. A detailed interrogation was scheduled to take place tomorrow. As two guards were placed at the only entrance to the room, the sound of broken glass resounded from behind the closed doors. 
what the dot? The guards were surprised by the sound and opened the door to see in the room and were astonished. Gee a golem, dot two golems were there. If Jean saw this, he'd notice that they're the same golems that attacked the tax carriers from Kana village. Foo foo foo, as long as these guys are around I can't be caught. I have no use for this country anymore. Dot. As he said so, Valentino was already disappearing through the escape hole, the golems rushing after him. W. Wait, one of the guards runs out in pursuit, while the other ran in order to report it to the Lord. What was that? Valentino has fled. Dot. The Lord who heard the report couldn't believe their ears. It appeared that a noble's son with a clear parentage ran away for fear of conviction. Hurry up and arrange a search. Dot. The subordinate followed the instructions, but there were few guards in this town. One by one they gathered increasing from the original 10 to 20 people. Even with the resting half, their numbers were not enough to handle two golems. And then, Lord Ferenciano, the visitors from the Sharoro Empire, Reinhardt and Elsa, and the championship team MJR, are here to see you. They are with the harbor guard as well. If it was only Jean and the others, they would have been put off, but when the female lord heard they were with an aristocrat, she ordered to let them through while thinking it was annoying. Her appearance began to change as she listened to their story. When Reinhardt cast a reed on the control course of the golem to display the instructions contents, destroy the ship of Team 35 and recover the evidence of the El Dorado transactions that were hidden in it. The person who gave these orders is Valentino. Ed. Well done Sherlock. The evidence has already been collected, this is it. Reinhardt put the evidence on the table. The complexion of Ferenciano turned pale and confirmed that the crest was one that Valentino used. When the story is put together, Valentino seems to have been involved in smuggling. A year ago, the El Dorado was meant to be gifted to the royal family, but it went missing and was presumably stolen. The same El Dorado was then found hidden within Marsh's ship, which was also accompanied by the smuggling contract. TL this was clumsy to translate, so any advice on better wording is appreciated, after the editor gets through with it, of course. A carved seal of an T is engraved on the evidence dot. The stone's appearance was written within the contract, and it depicted that all of the stones shared the same E marking. But, it was often hidden in such a place, wasn't it dot? The female lord regarded a strange thing, Marcia thought for a little. Oh, it must be that then. A magic craftsman wasn't found to participate last year, but this year they could so the ship was being remodeled. Dot. At that time, anyone could approach it since it was stored at a beach and not a dock. It was a ship with an unusual shape, so it worked well as a marker. There was a report that they pursued a suspicious person. When they caught up with him and inspected his personal belongings, they found nothing. Dot. The Marquis said so while looking at the past records. At that time, Marcia saw Valentino and was gloomily told to be his mistress. Because it was bothersome, she went to the neighboring town where her father's shop was with the catamaran. Valentino who intended to collect it immediately seemed to have gotten impatient. He only found it again when Marcia decided to participate in the competition with the ship that hid the evidence of his smuggling. All of the reasons became clear with this. When we interrogate Valentino, we'll also find out the third party responsible that stole and are trading the El Dorado. Reinhardt said with a relieved face, but the female lord frowned. In fact, some time ago Valentino escaped from custody with the aid of Golems. What? Dot? I have to report to the Imperial Capital and place Valentino on a wanted list. Reinhardt, could you go with me? Dot? Yes, of course. Dot. Jean and Marcia left at that point. From then on, there was no place for civilians. The next morning, Jean and Marcia bid farewell at the port. If you come to town, make sure to visit me, because I will build up Marcia's shipyard magnificently. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Make a lot of good ships. Jean and Marcia shook hands and parted in this way. Afterwards, other than Valentino, another person was arrested for the smuggling. One of the guardsmen was hired to set fire to the dock. They were off duty, but they approached the dock area with free entry by sight. 
it also came to light that the guard captain committed multiple misdeeds and was also receiving a bribe from Valentino. He was dismissed and jailed. The men who were stunned by Reiko when they tried to attack Marcia were caught for another incident in the neighboring town, but they confessed readily when they considered their other crimes and were interrogated. Later on, a large number of Death Sea Serpent corpses were found off of Io Island, but there were no witnesses who could be questioned about it. Volume 4 Chapter 1, First Flight You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. 4.01 First Flight After admiring the scene that was Port Rock, Gene took a short trip back to Horai Island. He would later return to Port Rock at another date for another 10 days before he planned to visit the imperial aristocracy of Cecilio with Reinhardt. They gained a lot of things from visiting Port Rock. Fish sauce could be found but sadly there still wasn't any rice. Ah, uh, as I thought, baths are great. There were only showers in Port Rock, so for the first time in a while, Jean was relaxing in a morning bath. Father, I will wash your back. The line was from Reiko. While she had the appearance of a 10-year-old girl, she was actually a super automata, capable of fighting an entire country. Ed, degree degree, ah, thanks dot. While having his back washed by Reiko, Jean was thinking of the future. I want to make a high-speed vehicle. I think an air dot plane that uses a magic jet propulsion engine would be appropriate dot. A jet engine that uses wind magic. Making jet planes before propeller planes was made possible thanks to the unique trait of this world that was magic. After getting out of the bath, Jean prepared a large amount of light silver. Light silver is lightweight and a good conductor of magic power. Its identity is the element with the atomic number 22, titanium, with the 26 neutrons replaced with magic particles. TL silent. Trouble with, have translated it as magic particles for now. It was no wonder that Jean chose this as the material for the aircraft. It was also decided that the windshield would be made from a transparent crystal instead of glass. It was possible to start construction of the plane straight away because he had already decided on the materials used. Hmm, first is normal tapered wings, we don't want swept wings. Though. Straight wings and angled wings, versus V, respectively. From the beginning, there was no plan of the aircraft that would break the speed of sound. Ed. The pilot would go splat unless magic plot armor. Now, where to install the engine dot? The thrust should be along the aircraft's center of gravity to make it easy to balance. It can be put at the back, just before the air intake dot. Gradually it began to take shape. The problem is the flight control system dot. You couldn't make a real air dot plane cockpit from a model one. There wasn't that much information from games. Well, elevator control stick, rudder, and this will probably move the ailerons he decided on the operation of the plane from his very limited knowledge. Throttle and brake, brake has to connect to the flaps. Working earnestly, Gene finished his construction in no time. The mass of light silver had now transformed into an air dot plane, clad in shining silver. Autopilot is not possible, but it'll survive running by itself for a while. Dot. Just like the time when constructing a golem, and with the previous experience of making a glider golem, a navigation aid system was assembled. In this way, it was a prototype made a combination of technologies. Done. Dot. That afternoon, the first prototype aircraft was completed. Five parallel runways were made by golem number one, under the command of the land developer Topaz. TL silent. I think that's what it means, well, let's run a test flight. Dot. Jean was about to board the plane in high spirits when, Father, please wait. Dot. Reiko stopped him. According to what you said, this magic device is going to fly in the sky. Dot. Ah, yes. Dot. Although I believe in Father's technology, if by any chance it breaks, what will you do? He hadn't considered any safety measures and didn't design a parachute. Please let me try first, Father. Dot. Reiko is a super automata and could easily cope with most situations thrown at her. Mm, I understand Reiko. I'll leave the first flight to you. Dot. Yes, I understand. Dot. So, using information transfer, the knowledge on flying planes was passed to Reiko. The seat height was also readjusted because it was too low for Reiko. 
Finally, it was time for the first flight. Well then, time to start. The wind was weak, the perfect weather for flight, so Reiko started up the magic jet engine. There was a sound from the air intake as the prototype began to glide. As the speed gradually increased, Reiko moved the control stick. Yes. It's flying. The prototype lifted slightly and began flying into the blue sky. It's a success. Reiko flew around the periphery of the island and when she became familiar with the controls to some extent, she began to test the limits of speed, climb, dive and sharp turns. While it was only a visual estimation, the speed was about 400k-ph to 500k-ph. There was no problem with stability during climbs, dives and sharp turns. This is largely because of the light silver which has a 5 times greater strength property than duralumin for the same weight. In addition, the navigational auxiliary was also learning and starting to support. Ah, uh, I want a communication device. Dot. A video camera can be reproduced from the magic eye monitor and magic projection screen he saw during the competition in Port Rock. I should make a magic ear and magic mouth. Dot. The names were only tentative for now. The sun was starting to go down, so Jean signaled to Reiko to come down. Reiko lowered her altitude and came back towards the straight runway. At this point in time, birds. Dot. A flock of birds, returning to their roost, flew across the front of the airplane. The birds struck the fuselage, covering the windshield with blood and the magic jet engine started sucking in the birds instead of the air. It was an accident called a bird strike. The magic jet engine, which had swallowed a number of birds, began to stall and abruptly stopped. With the view also blocked by the birds, the aircraft lost balance. The result was that it simply fell out of the sky and crashed. Reiko. It crashed from an altitude of 50 meters and was destroyed to the extent that it was a total loss. Needless to say, there was no fire as it was a product of magic engineering. Jean rushed over to the crash site. The location was marked by the assistant golem, with Soleil and Luna accommodating Reiko. Ha! Ha! Dot. Jean was gasping for breath as he reached the crash site. I'm very sorry father. Dot. Reiko deeply bowed her head. Re, Reiko, are you okay? Is your body hurt or anything? Not? To Jin's question, I'm okay. This body was made by father so there are no abnormalities anywhere. However, I've broken the plane you gave me. Jean hugged Reiko, idiot, we can remake the plane. But Reiko, there's only one of you. Dot. Father, I'm a doll automata. Father is capable of making anything whether it is this body or another one. Dot. Reiko said with her head against Jean. Idiot. You are you, born from today's experiences and memories spent together, something only belonging to you. Even if a similar automata was made, there's only one of you Reiko. Dot. Father, E.D. Liek and subscribe if you C.R.I. Aritem, Reiko buried her face into Jin's chest. Thank you very much. Dot. And in a small voice, Reiko is very happy. Dot. With a smile, Jean replied let's go home. So that a second accident doesn't occur, the second prototype will have some more improvements. Dot. Yes, I will do my best to help. Dot. The broken aircraft was transported by Soleil and Luna, following Jean and Reiko as they headed back to the laboratory. Volume 4 Chapter 2 Failure Teaches Success you are listening to the novel at fametv.com. 4.02 Failure Teaches Success The next day, Jean started making the magic communication device. A magic eye would fly and send information from a distance to a magic screen. Free ether, that fills space, vibrates under certain conditions, and can transmit a wave. It is similar to the relationship between air and sound. Taking advantage of this, a magic tool capable of transmitting sound was also developed. The device was named Manacom. TL Silent. Something like Mana Communication I think. A magic screen and magic eye were combined to make a telecom. Right, you can now communicate with the ground with this dot. A protective device was then prepared. Some sort of barrier, it would be nice if it could reduce the physical impact on the body. The idea was so that you wouldn't get hurt in a plane crash. 
a magic device that created a barrier against physical damage was placed under the seat. In case of escaping, a parachute was needed. Jean made a parachute from the thread of a ground spider. It is both light and durable. If you attach a small magic jet engine, you can slow the descent velocity and control the movement. This is different from a normal parachute and the benefits are still unknown. After that, with all the safety measures, construction started on Unit 2. The base was the same as the first unit except the shape was changed to a more sophisticated form. Parts where more strength was necessary was reinforced with adamantium. Furthermore, an extra seat was made for Reiko. So far so good. The problem is how to avoid sucking in solid materials into the engine. Jean was troubled by this problem for some time, then he suddenly got it. It was placed under the seat, a physical defense ward. It was a barrier, but there was no problem with people inside running out of oxygen. That meant that it lets air through it. Ah, uh, but I'm not sure if it blocks winds above a certain speed. It would let magic such as strong wind or blowing wind through. Eh, I see, the magic formula here, does this dot. Jean started to investigate the magic formula of the physical barrier ward. Previously in Blue Land, he demonstrated his ability to evaluate Bina's magic tools. As a result, the air intake inlet was made to repel substances other than gas. Liquids and solids were blocked by the barrier. The barrier could cover the entire body of the plane. The only drawback was that it would let wind magic through. Finally, a magi crystal was added as spare fuel. Should the ether converter fail, it would still be able to land safely. In the end, the security measures have to be considered. Duh. The control core of the navigational aid system was recovered from Unit 1 and was copied to stabilize flight. All right, let's go. Duh. That afternoon, Prototype Unit 2, loaded with Jean and Reiko, soared into the sky above Horai Island. Wow, this really feels great. Duh. Jean was ecstatically flying in the sky for the first time. Incidentally, the maneuvers were mainly done by Reiko. Father, this plane is a lot more stable. Dot. Even though the final shape was adjusted by intuition, it seems to have worked. Failure teaches success, don't be troubled by it. The efficiency of the new model has risen. Dot. With Reiko as the instructor, Jean started learning how to steer the plane. Please slowly get familiar with the controls. Dot. Gradually, the steering transferred from Reiko to Jean, by evening, Jean was flying the plane by himself. This was possible due to the navigational system. TL silent. I've basically given up on this pair of sentences, I have no idea what they mean. Ah, uh, this feels great. Dot. After safely landing, Jean was in a good mood. Reiko was also happy. It feels like I've seen some good dreams today. Soleil and Luna are waiting at the house with dinner waiting. Jean walked back with a light gait. The next day, Jean tried to build himself a boat. The hull shape was trimaran. Similar to a catamaran, it is suitable for high dot speed navigation. Moreover, since the power source and cabin can be placed in the middle of the hull, the center of gravity can be lowered. The hull was mostly made from light silver and, the engine, is this dot. Based on the magic jet engine, a magic water flow propulsion engine was developed. The wind magic was just replaced with water magic and the efficiency remained good. Of course, the principle is different from an actual water jet propulsion system. It must avoid sucking things in okay. They had learned since the accident of the bird strike. A ward was modified to stop solids such as aquatic plants from being sucked in. After lunch, Jean took the ship to Tatsumi Bay accompanied by Reiko. The boat was carried by Soleil and Luna. Right, do you want to go together on the maiden voyage? Dot. Unlike an airplane, a boat is relatively safe. Jean started to maneuver the boat. Since there was no known boat steering system, it was controlled like a motor vehicle. Pressing the accelerator pushes the boat forwards, stepping on the brakes triggers underwater brake plates. Forwards and backwards is controlled by a lever. A steering wheel turns the boat left and right. Oh, this feels comfortable. Dot. The prototype boat sailed from Tatsumi Bay. All right, time for a maximum speed test. Dot. 
Jean fully depressed the accelerator. The trimaran speed went up, the maximum speed is about 70 km per hour. That's enough. Well, Reiko is still faster. Jean murmured while looking at Reiko in the passenger seat. Reiko heard it and smiled happily. Jean was now proficient enough with the boat to sail it back to the port where Soleil and Luna were waiting. Well, this prototype boat NO. One we will name it Hydra 1. Water contains hydrogen, so in a sense Jean might have picked a good but unusual name. Oh yeah, let's call the plane Albatross. Jean named the plane Albatross because it sounded something like it. TL silent. Not sure about that Albatross line, the next day, right, I think we can start mass producing the boats and planes. The ship was for island defense while the plane was for reconnaissance and defense. He wanted to use them to get a better understanding of the world. Reiko, give the airplane to Soleil and the boat to Luna, get them to make 30 of each. Dot. I understand. Dot. Since it's only replicating a prototype made by Jean, it can easily be done by Soleil and Luna. Although, just to note in case, this cannot be done by the general golems of this world, only the most high performance golems can do this. Jean is not conscious of the comparison because the only technology he knows concerning magic engineering was taught by the previous magic craft meister, who was capable of making super advanced golems and doll automatas. Because of that, I'll be making golems to pilot the boats and planes. Reiko help me dot. Okay, the golems were built with a focus on lightness so light silver was used. Because it had been done many times before, 40 golems were created unceremoniously. As said before, light silver is an isotope of titanium, which allows you to change colors depending on the oxide film on the surface. So, the sky golems were made light blue while the sea golems were navy blue. Right, now to use knowledge transfer level 4, it's good that I'm accustomed to it. TL silent. Not sure about the second half. On the first time he tried, Jean accidentally transferred too much knowledge and the burden was large. After getting accustomed to it after many times, the time required to transfer knowledge is now shorter. I'll name them Sky 1 to Sky 20 and Marine 1 to Marine 20. TL silent. What? Only 20 pilots for 30 machines. Of course his naming sense hadn't changed much. Sky 1 and Marine 1 are the respective captains of the Air Force and Navy. With this, the defense of Horai Island became a lot better, even without weapons. I don't want to make too many weapons, I wonder if I have a choice in this world. Thought. Jean decided that with demons in this world, forces for self.defense would be required. Aside from that, Sky 1, using your subordinates, reconnoiters around Horai Island and make a map. I'll teach you the procedure now. Thought. You can use knowledge transfer to teach the necessary knowledge in a moment. This is a lot more efficient than teaching humans. Knowledge transfer is not effective in transferring knowledge to other humans. The position of Horai Island would probably become more important in the world, Jean looked forward to the results. Now it's time to think about armor and weapons. Jin's desire to make things was not restricted. First of all is armor. Considering the materials, Jean headed to the underground warehouse. Volume 4 Chapter 3, Legendary Equipment You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. 4.03 Legendary Equipment Although I can make basic armor and shields, Jean didn't really feel like putting on such equipment. Accessories it is then. TL silent. Not sure about the first few sentences. Jean took a magic crystal out from a nearby shelf. Let's make a ring or pendant. The magi crystal in his hand went iridescent, forming, writing magic formula. I wonder if this is any good. Dot. The final product was a ring that exhibited all the colors from the rainbow. Reiko, are you there? Dot? Yes, father. Dot. When Jean called, Reiko immediately came to his side. Take a look at this. It's a guard ring. Dot. It was the ring that he just made. The ring has a complicated magic formula written into it. I can't analyze it. Dot. Even though she was skilled enough in magic engineering to be Jin's assistant, Reiko was still no match for the Magi Craftmeister in this field. 
You can't tell. It's designed to nullify both physical and magic attacks, so I'd like to see what happens if Reiko attacks. TL silent. I think he's asking Reiko to attack. It's too dangerous. You should test it on a golem. Reiko was opposed. She wasn't certain if Jean, with the ring, would be able to prevent Reiko's attack. Hmm. It's as you say. It can't be helped. Now who can test it? Soleil and Luna had their hands full with the mass production of airplanes and ships. Who's available? Ah. Uh. Peridot is dot. It was the golem in charge of household chores. It's a modest role, but thanks to that, there wasn't a single speck of dust in the laboratory. Right, let's ask Peridot dot. So they went to the square in front of the laboratory. Okay, Peridot, after wearing this ring, you only need to stand there dot. Yes, I understand master dot. After putting on the ring, Peridot moved a sufficient distance away. Peridot, the keyword to trigger the ring is a barrier. Try testing it now dot. Yes, barrier dot. It wasn't visible to the eye, but it should have been triggered with that. Reiko, start with basic magic dot. Reiko was given the go-ahead. Yes. Fireball dot. A two-meter tall fireball flew towards Peridot. But as they reached within one meter of Peridot, its movement becomes hampered and the fireball dissipated. Okay, here is the next one. Fire bullet dot. Dozens of 30 centimeters fire bullets flew forward. However, they were also stopped. Hmm. That was good. Reiko, next dot. Yes, flame lance dot. Flame lance is an advanced magic. It's powerful enough to even kill a demon sea serpent. But even that magic was stopped within one meter. Right, it's effective against fire magic. Next try lightning magic dot. Okay dot. In the end, it was found to be able to defend against all advanced magic, so Jean was greatly satisfied. In addition, it could also defend against wind and water magic. Reiko, that's enough for magic. Try hitting her physically, this time dot. Jean wanted to test its effect against physical attacks. Yes, I understand. Here I come dot. First Reiko tried to punch at 10% power, but her fist stopped 10 centimeters away from Peridot. Hmm. It can't be helped that the distance is shorter compared with magic. Well then, Reiko, 20% dot. Okay dot. The barrier then blocked Reiko's fist at 20% power. Finally, 30% dot. Yes, here I come dot. Reiko rarely used 30% of her power. Roughly 5% would put adults to shame, 10% was superhuman, 20% was beyond human. The moment Reiko's fist at 30% power hit, sparks seemed to scatter, but somehow the barrier still survived. That's enough Reiko, thanks for your hard work. Thank you Peridot. Jean thanked Reiko and Peridot, well then Peridot, as a reward, the ring is yours. Thank you very much Master. Peridot bowed and went away. Jean turned to Reiko, Reiko are you alright? Is your hand damaged or anything? Not? Yes, there are no abnormalities. Thank you for your concern father. Dot. I see. Well then Reiko, what do you think? I think it's good enough. Dot. Yes. Although we didn't try, since it can withstand advanced magic, it can probably stop 50% of my power. For an individual's defense, it was at an unprecedented legendary class. In this world, the space is filled with ether and could be manipulated with magic. Just by saying barrier, you would become impervious to everything. E. Dinexius. MC is OP as always, right, let's return to the laboratory. Jean returned to the laboratory with Reiko and ten more rings, identical to the first. Four were given to the five color golems, except Peridot, two were planned to be given to Soleil and Luna as a reward. Jean then made another ring which combined Magi Crystal with Mithril Silver to create a pendant, with the same magic formula written on it to give the same effect. The chain was also made with Mithril Silver. Reiko, this is yours. Jean held it out to Reiko. Eh? 
for me. Reiko was confused. Ah, uh, you've helped me out a lot, also you're a girl, don't you think it would be nice to have a pendant? Reiko smiled happily. Thank you father. I'll take care of it. She received it and immediately hung it around her neck. Yeah, it looks good. Jean was also happy. Finally, Jean started on focusing on his own equipment. I'll make a bracelet instead of a ring, since it would suit me better. TL silent. Someone double check. A bracelet was made with adamantium and plated with mithril silver. Its shape was similar to a wristwatch and had a magi crystal set in it. With this size, aside from defense magic, attack magic can also be written. Previously, in the city of Port Rock, Reinhardt had a wand. A magic activation sequence had been carved into it and could be activated if magic was put in. Let's use that as a reference. Rather than just engraving the sequences, a selection was allowed. Fire, water, wind, earth, thunder, light and dark magic could be used up to the advanced level. Right, now to put an extra security so that is can only be used by me. A one-of-a-kind legendary equipment had been made in this world. Time to try it out. When Jean muttered this, I will be your opponent, said Reiko. They went out to the square again, and Jean shot various types of magic at Reiko. However all of it was blocked by the barrier created by the pendant, Jean was delighted. Well, with this magic is decent. Dot. It has to be said that being able to use all magic up to the advanced level is definitely not ordinary. E. Dinexius. Orly, what made you think that? Volume 4. Chapter 4, Golem Engine. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Here's the last chapter from Silent, please go check out his current translation, Legend and thank him for these four chapters. 4.04 for Golem Engine After making a set of legendary accessories, Jean took a break. Soaking in a bath at dusk was refreshing. Ah, uh, we're doing well, we managed to get several ideas afloat. Dot. As Jean leisurely leaked a murmur, Reiko was watching from the side. Now Jean wanted to make a motor engine for rotational motion. How to make the rotational movement from foot pedals, at that time, an inspiration struck Jean. That's it. Dot. Golem engine. Dot. The idea is turning the crankshaft by incorporating the same mechanism used in a golem's arms and legs to replace the pistons. Dot. Jean didn't know the difference between a two-stroke and four-stroke engine, but he knew enough to make an engine. I can try to make a prototype in bronze. Dot. Bronze is a material commonly used because it's easy to shape with magic. Naturally, Jean thought to make a prototype out of this. In the end, a prototype of the golem engine was completed before dark. It was about 50 centimeters tall. All right, time to commission this before dinner, start. Dot. Inside, the drive mechanism starts to move and the crankshaft turns. Oh, it's turning, it's turning. Dot. It was found that the speed of rotation could be increased by pouring in more mana. Hmm. As I thought, this is the limit. Dot. The limit was roughly 300 rpm. As this was going to be cranked by hand, it was unlikely to be raised above this number of revolutions. Reiko, can you try to stop the shaft? Dot. Yes, I'll try. Dot. Reiko held the 2 cm diameter shaft at an output of 5%. Although the speed of rotation slowed, it didn't stop. It finally stopped at 10% output. Right, thanks Reiko, the torque, rotational force, is quite something. It could even go in a car. Dot. TL silent. Double check second half of sentence. It remained durable. Since we've found the max rotation, it's time for dinner. Reiko, don't stop it, but tell me if the situation gets bad. Dot. With that, Jean headed for the mansion outside. Soleil and Luna made the daily meals there. It's so late today. She seems accustomed to it. Dot. TL silent. I think this is what it means. Yes, father. Dot. There was wheat porridge, bread and tea. For tea, Reiko would sneak back to Kana village in the middle of the night to take some tea leaves. The seedling would only produce drinkable tea leaves several years after being planted. 
eating wheat porridge, drinking tea and spreading marmalade on bread. Recently, a plant similar to strawberries had been found and strawberry jam was made. Thinking about the durability of the engine, Jean quickly finished dinner and went back to the laboratory. Oh, father dot. How is it dot? Yes, it's working without any problems dot. Let's see dot. The golem engine was too hot to touch. The piston didn't have a heat sink, so this was only natural. All right, let's stop it dot. When Jean stopped the engine, he took it apart. This was to determine if any parts were worn out or damaged. Uh-huh, as I thought, the damaged parts are mostly the golem parts. An adamantium skeleton with muscle tissue made by twisting magical fiber is best. Dot. If you thought that the constitution was similar to Reiko's, you wouldn't be wrong. Well then, let's get the production started. Reiko, get me some adamantium. Dot. Asking Reiko to get the heavy adamantium, Jean went to get the magic fiber and magi crystals on his own. It's finished. Dot. Late at night, the golem engine was completed. The crank and shaft, which were supported by ball bearings, was mostly made with adamantium. The golem parts were strengthened with multiple reinforcements. As a result the torque was increased to nearly three times that of the trial. Reiko only stopped the shaft after raising her output to 20%. Finally, I have to make gears now. Bot. With that, the day's work was finished. The next day, Jean began to seriously consider making gears. He had tried making them before, but when they were put together they were stiff or loose making them useless. Even Magi Craftmeisters had a weakness. The Magi Craftmeisters' ability was similar to a 3D software drawing system. By default, the basic shapes of balls, discs or cubes could be copied. But since there wasn't a concept of gears, as long as there wasn't a reference, it was hard to make it perfect. Hmm. How exactly can I make the model dot? Jean was grumbling as he ate breakfast. Reiko was worrying at the situation. Father, you have to stop thinking about it during meals. Oh. Ah. You're right, in short first divide the circumference equally, father. Unable to hold it in, Reiko finally scolded Jean. Reiko. Surprised by Reiko's yelling, Jean looked at Reiko. Ah. Ah. Oh, uh, Reiko herself was surprised that she yelled at Jean. I, I'm very sorry. Dot. Whoever she learned from, Reiko went into a dejisa. I have had an irreverent attitude to father. Please punish me. Jean reached for Reiko. Reiko had already determined her resolution. She wouldn't defend or do anything. When Jin's hands touched her, she would be deconstructed in a blink of an eye. But contrary to expectation, Jin's hands gently stroked Reiko's head. Sorry Reiko, I made you worry. It's as you say. From now on correct me if I'm wrong dot. You're not angry dot. Why should I be mad? Reiko yelled because you were thinking of me dot. Jean said while eating the rest of breakfast. Jean had been thinking since the morning but hadn't come up with any good ideas. After lunch, Jean was drinking tea at the mansion. The cup in his hand was cylindrical. He fiddled around with it while thinking of gears. In short, I can translate a single gear into copies. With that I can make any number of identical teeth. Thought. Ball bearings only need to be the same weight and spherical, but a gear cannot deviate even slightly. Father, please don't try the impossible. Thought. Reiko was anxious seeing Jean suffer like this. But Jean didn't seem to hear it. Reiko came to the conclusion that it wasn't possible to stop Jean from thinking about it. Instead, it would be better to help him to get him out of this state. Therefore, using engineering magic, Reiko processed a wooden board that was at hand into a circular shape. Shapes of various diameters were created and placed in front of Jean. Hmm. This is Dot. Jean noticed it and looked up. I was wondering if this could help father think. Jean took one in his hand. Disc. When combined it made a friction drive. In order to increase friction, teeth were cut into the side of the disc. TL silent. Needs to be double checked. First you have to think about the materials, you want a material that won't slip, a thought suddenly hit Jean. 
That's right. First of all create a linear gear, rack. Then cut the number of teeth required, round them off, done dot. Father dot. Ah. Uh. Reiko. Looking at the disc you made me, I thought of something. Thank you dot. Jean stroked Reiko's head while saying so. Reiko's narrowed eyes looked very happy. With this, I can probably make spur gears. If I can make spur gears, it is likely I can also make bevel gears. In short, because of the equal divisions of the circumference, it is easy to make, using that as a reference. Harder production is possible. Father, it's time for dinner. Reiko said, Hmm. It's this time already. The moon was already in the sky. I'm starting to feel hungry as well. Jean stretched while saying so and went for the meal. But after dinner, Jean started thinking of a wide variety of ways to fabricate gears, very late at last came up with a method. Okay, you can go to sleep now. Good night Reiko. Yes, father, good night. Relieved that Jean also went to bed, Reiko was glad to be patted by Jean today. Volume 4 Chapter 5, A Gearbox, A Magic Turbine, Anne You are listening to the novel at fametv.com 4.05 A Gearbox, A Magic Turbine, Anne The next morning, after Jean woke up and had his breakfast, he began making a gear. First, he created a linear gear as a reference. First, he prepared a straightened adamantium strip, then he made the teeth of the gear. He didn't worry about the module, the size of the teeth. This is how Jean normally works. T.L. Fallon It actually says module and has the part in the parentheses. It seems the author researched this to give a more authentic explanation, so there may be more as the chapter progresses. Is this much good? Dot? Because Jean plans to use it for a car, it needs to be strong, but since he's using adamantium, it'll be work well at a small size. Although it's simple to make it big by itself, Jean decided to start from something small. For the time being, he made 200 copies of his first one. These were made without difficulty. If lined up face to face, it becomes immediately apparent that the spacing of the teeth is the same and they're all identical. Well, if I can make do with one band, and... Could I, yes, I can do it. Dot. TL. He's muttering, so this was hard to translate. He completed the teeth on the linear gear. After that, yeah, make a gear with the number of teeth that I need to fit this. Yes, it's a success. Now, into a circle. I think I'm done with the outside of the gear with this dot. At this stage, he has a gear with his desired number of teeth. It is, so to speak, a donut with teeth. Now, to fill the inside circle of the gear. Great, it worked. Dot. In front of Jean laid a completed spur gear. When Jean made another gear with a different number of teeth and tried to engage the two, they engaged so neatly that Jean began to feel like dancing. If a spur gear is made, Jean can make a bevel gear somehow as well. However, it will be limited to the same number of teeth. Still, it was fascinating that it could change the rotation 90 degrees, and it would quickly increase the kinds of machines Jean could make. Yosh, let's make a car dot. He made the chassis with light silver and got carried away and made a four-cylinder engine, no, a four-part engine. The tires are made neatly from rubber and in the afternoon, the car is completed. Un, un, it's nice. Dot. Because there's no transmissions, it can only be operated by an accelerator and a brake, so it's not automatic. Because the output of the golem is constant, it can work. After driving around in the flat area in front of his research center, Jean got off satisfied. Father, I feel that the golem horses were more versatile. Dot. Huh. Dot. Jean couldn't understand Reiko's question for a minute, but shortly after realized the implications of it. The airplane had A and the ship had A. Although Jean had thought of the golem engine for land that's paved, he forgot that most of the world hasn't been paved. How much time until it's a car's turn in this world? Hmm. Did I become complacent? Well, it'll work for this island. Dot was said, Reiko, have Topaz make a road network on the island. You don't have to pave the surface it use, it'll prevent the weeds and also allow something heavy to go across it. Dot. Yes. 
should I give priority to Tatsumi Bay, the fields, and the airport? TL. Was it called Tatsumi Bay in a previous translation? I'll have to come back to this. Ah, yes, please. Because I made the airport for the airplane, the maintenance of the road was urgent business. A large warp gate is installed at each place as well, but a road is still necessary. Ah, I'm hungry. It was already pitch black out. Father, I made dinner today. Ah, Reiko, I'm looking forward to it. Because Soleil and Luna were busy mass. producing the airplanes and ships, Reiko took charge of cooking for Jean. It's pure white bread, isn't it? Yes. Reiko peels the wheat, one by one, and the bread was made with the ground down flour. Mmm. Tasty. Jean eats the bread and has vegetable and fish soup, after all, the bread without the crust is, is more delicious when mixed in. I'm sorry, the rice hasn't been found yet. No, I understand, I'm asking for a lot. I'll search for it in the western country, I'm going to this time. Since they couldn't find rice in the port town, Port Rock, Jean thought they might find it in a western country where the things might be different and unusual. Seven days since he returned to Horai Island. Might as well make a turbine. Dot. The first day Jean began with the lines. The principle was simple, to put an impeller in a sealed container and turn it with wind magic. Since wind doesn't need to be taken in from the outside it circulates well and doesn't leak, so it can be done easily. Oh, the number of revolutions is high as expected. Dot. Because it's basically a windmill, the rotation speed is high. On the other hand, the torque is inferior to a golem engine. Oh well, it'll be useful for something. It was fun to make. Reiko savors the significance of being near someone like Jean. The data of the work Jean completed is also saved in Reiko, and it's put in order and preserved so that it may be possible to reproduce at any time. It is the role of an auxiliary storage device for Jean. Father, what happened to the talk of creating a weapon? Dot? And, like a secretary, she points out what Jean forgot. Oh, did I say something like that? It will be necessary for the defense force. Dot. Jean said and then was lost in thought, and he decided to make a laser standard equipment. The reason being that it's easy to make non-lethal if he changes the strength. Although the defense method is limited, it's easy to aim and hard to make. TL. Pretty sure he's talking about for others, so if one gets lost, they can't just reproduce it. Okay, I should be able to make it like this. Jean has Reiko get the materials right away so he can begin manufacturing. The structure is simple. In the form of a thin flashlight, he writes the inside. TL. Is it just me, or is he making a lightsaber? Okay, now for authentication. Father, what is authentication? Reiko asked about the unfamiliar words. Ah. Uh. Let's say, for example, you lost it and someone else found it, it still won't work for that person. Without Jin's magical power waveform it won't operate. It was named Magic Waveform Authentication. Because all the golems and Reiko inherited Jin's magic waveform when he made them they can use it without a problem. And that's done. The prototype was completed. It looked like a tube and wasn't of the pistol type. TL. I guess it's not a lightsaber, do you want to try it? Dot. They go outside of the laboratory and aim at a pile of rocks at the edge of the open space and fire the laser. Thin rays the size of a needle pierce the rock in a few seconds. Yes, a success. Dot. Jean changes some of the settings while saying so and prepares to fire once again. The range is short, which slightly diffused the rays, but the rock was vaporized immediately this time. This is dangerous, we shouldn't use it except in an emergency. Jean said and decided to consider another low-power weapon. How about paralysis? A stun gun. Dot. When Jean first met Bina in the Blue Land, she had a paralysis cane. This allowed him to understand that such a magic tool already exists. TL, was it called a paralysis cane before? Oh well, I'm going with that for now. Well, I'll make something a few stages above that. Dot. Jean was enthusiastic, but... Father, it's almost time for lunch, please make sure you eat. Dot. 
Reiko told Jean and he obediently left the research center and went towards the house. Did Soleil make today's lunch? The menu was toast, citron marmalade, a salad, and eggs sunny side up, although it looks like breakfast, Jean doesn't worry about it and eats. Gaucha Susama. TL. Although I figure most of you know this already, it's a formal way of saying thanks for the food after they're done eating, no real translation for it though. I could just put, thanks for the food, or, I'm done, but I think I'll leave it at that. Immediately after eating, he headed back to the laboratory. As usual, when it is about making something, father always lose sight of his surrounding. TL. Thanks to TY for helping with this line. Reiko followed immediately after Jean to help him. The stun gun was easy to complete, because he had looked at the a paralysis cane before. He resolved some of the faults and improved the efficiency. It's looked similar to a wand and was about 30 centimeters long. He also made two police baton type ones as well. The wand was for self-defense and the baton was for security. The wand was made of light silver and the baton was made of a mithril and adamantium composite. Since it's come to this, I'll also make an army dot. Jean said so and made 20 golems and named them from 1.20, land. With this, Horai Island's armed forces were completed. Volume 4 Chapter 6, Confirming the Location of Horai Island You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Here's a surprise bonus chapter, courtesy of Raby Infested Man. He decided to try out translating and has provided this chapter. He said he might translate more in the future and plans to do a few more this month, so you'll definitely get more. I've gone over it and made sure the translation had no major errors, and I gave it a light editing, but as usual, it's inevitable that I've missed things, so let me know in the comments below. I'll have 4.7 out tomorrow, so enjoy for now. Falimer translated by Raby Infested Man, I'll just call him Raby from now on, edited by Nexias. Sorry for the very late editing guys T.T was in pretty much the same situation as Falimer, but mine were spread out over a few weeks, sorry. 4.06 confirming the location of Horai Island Day 8, Father, Sky.1 has come to report. Has the result of the reconnaissance come back? Jean, who finished breakfast and was drinking tea while waiting for the report, hastily headed for the laboratory. The laboratory is better equipped than the house. When Jean and Reiko got to the to the basement hall of the laboratory, Sky.1 was already waiting. Oh, Sky.1, have you finished the aerial reconnaissance? Yes. I have created a schematic overview of the area surrounding Horai Island. Saying that Sky.1 spread out a big piece of paper. So to say, it's actually the leather of a demon beast tanned white. It's a durable material that could even withstand 1000 years without breaking. Hmm. Jean was impressed with the schematic. It was drawn beautifully. The map centered on Horai Island, heading east was the ocean. On the west side part of the continent was drawn. This continent is the continent with the Klein Kingdom and the Elias Kingdom. Yes, that's right. Sky.1 affirmed Jin's guess. All right, continue investigation from the sky with this condition. While you fly over the continent, do not let the people below you become aware of your existence, yes. I will fly as high as possible. Yeah, do that. Even if there were health concerns for humans when traveling through the sky such as atmospheric pressure, oxygen concentration and coldness, the golems aren't affected. Jean continues to examine the map. This must be the kingdom of Elias. To have such a form, and this is probably the area that I boat raced, and this is Io Island. And if you look even closer. Is there another island between Horai Island and the containment? Which is much smaller. Jean thought that the island could be an outpost for Horai Island or maybe a villa. The use of the plane is permitted. Take some of the army golems and aircrafts and investigate the island, T.L. Fallon. Raby is doing a good job so far, this is the only one I can't figure out either, but he hasn't missed anything yet. Okay, so, if it is an uninhabited island, then I would like to make it into one of our islands. And we can call it the main island. Jean called Soleil and Luna as well as five colored golem maids, Marine.1, Land.1, to explain the future plan. 
1. When inviting someone in the future, first invite them to the villa. 2. The villa is thoroughly maintained to show that it looks like Jean is living there. 3. When it's time, it will be treated as a dummy for Horai Island. 4. The name of the island is Ukunlun Island. It was a hobby of Jin's to pick out such names. Did you understand the policy and the finer points getting stuck in the future in the confirmation of Jean? Everyone who was there answered with yes. If you don't have enough manpower, just tell me and I will send over more a yes, my master, if you are offering that too. Please increase the number of your subordinates, since the five golem maids asked altogether, Jean accepted. Besides Marine.1, point one, Sky.1 point one and Land.1 point one, there was a shortage of people. Ah, understand. That was why Jean decided to increase the number of golem subordinates that day. Father, is your magic power okay? Oh, there is still room for more. I guess that's all right then. Actually, since Jin's body is sustained by magical power, the quantity of active mana that it possesses was an extraordinary amount or it would be impossible. It would be a while before Jean notices it himself until his peers would point at it for him. Reiko had no other choice but to stay silent as there was no evidence. That's why if an ordinary mage had tried this they would have had used all of their magic long ago, and finally the golems were finished. Five golems each were directly commanded by Soleil and Luna. The names are Planetarium 1.5 for Soleil and Sadella 1.5 for Luna. The type of model was female. The five dot colored golem maids each had 90 bodies. Including the 10 previous bodies, there was a total of 100 bodies, which also donned the female type model. 80 golems each for the sky, marine, and land golems. A total of 100 bodies in each faction. The number of course, was 21. 100, the type of model was male. Ah, uh, I'm really tired. Jean muttered while he relaxed in the bath. I got tired more physically than magically. Even though Jean let Soleil and Luna, as well as the planetariums and Satellas help him with the golem creation, it would still be a world record of most golems created in one day. Reiko, how is the availability of materials? It seemed that Jean also became worried because he consumed large amounts of materials to create all the golems. Yes, it is okay. It is safe to make over 1,000 more golems, with copper, nickel and steel, light silver, adamantite etc. As for 1,000 years, the golems just kept digging without rest. Originally, this island was abundant in mineral resources, that's why Mother chose this island. Due to their nature, the underground resources within the vicinity of volcanoes are often known to be there. Reiko also explained to Jean that the risk of eruption was magically observed and relaxed. The predecessor was amazing, even in the modern earth, it is impossible to defeat the energy of a volcano. Would you like to go to Potlock in the afternoon tomorrow? The promise with Reinhardt is after 10 days. It is the day after tomorrow. I did so much in these eight days, yes, indeed father. Reiko who refrained from standing reports. Reiko, thank you for helping out. Thank you so much Reiko. No, it's because I exist to serve you father, while answering Jean, Reiko seemed to be happy, it is true though, well time to get out. Reiko handed a bath towel to Jean who just got out of the bath. Jean wiped his body and got dressed. Reiko, what is today's dinner? I asked. Certainly, it's grilled fish and fried shrimp. Oh. That sounds delicious, because there is oil, breadcrumbs, wheat flour and eggs, you can make tempura and fry it. Of course it was taught by Jean. There was something like a sauce so there was enough to be fried. Ah. Uh. It's good. Jean muttered satisfyingly while eating persica after his meal. T.L. Falland, I have no idea why the author chose to use Italian all of a sudden, it's a peach that he's eating. I am honored by your words, Father Luna in charge of the meal tonight happily said. Soleil and Luna are recently having glimpses of emotional expression, so it must be from the influence of Reiko. But it is still different for human beings, don't say it out loud, Jean muttered solely in his mind. Whether it's Reiko or any other golem, they are absolutely obedient to Jean who is their creator, so it is sometimes lonely. After all I wonder if humans want to be among those who are human as well. 
Jean who was thinking such a thing was looking up at the night sky from a window. Is father not cold? Reiko said. Ah. It's all right, as I answered, a nostalgic memory of living in the Kana village came to mind. On another note. Since Jean unconsciously absorbs external magical power from his surroundings, the magical power within Jean doesn't reduce much. This is also a benefit of the body he was supplemented with when Jean reincarnated. Ednexia's needs confirmation on this last bit.